the good news is that there is still a chance for humanity to still cap warming under two degrees uh, as compared to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution because scientists, it, uh, scientists think that anything above this is going to pose two huge risks uh, to humanity, ecosystems uh, and the economy and so socio-economic systems. However, in order to reach two degrees or perhaps even lower because other scientists believe actually we shouldn't exceed one and a half degrees, very strong actions have to be taken now because basically we have to reverse the growing trends in emissions in the next five to ten years. Fortunately, passive houses are one of our strongest tools in order to fight climate change for several reasons. One is that the potential for uh, passive houses to take over or very high performance buildings equivalent to uh, passive house standards. Um, also in new construction and retrofit have huge potentials uh, worldwide in order to fight uh, climate change since buildings uh, emit approximately one third uh, of uh, the emissions. When compared to other alternatives, passive houses, although you are talking about a long-term investment, so investments that pay back in a long time, nevertheless, uh, if uh, we look at these long time horizons, they compete very well with other um, climate uh, mitigation related instruments. And the plus for passive buildings is that they also come with all kinds of social co-benefits, what we call them, so other benefits, not only the saved energy costs, but also better comfort, um, more uh, higher levels of employment, uh, productivity gains for companies and perhaps the individuals, very strong health benefits in the long run, even though it small, seems small on the individual level, but on, at the company level, if you are able to eliminate some of the influence, uh, some of the flu cases or other infectious respiratory diseases, at the end of the day, this will become a large uh, uh, benefit uh, to companies uh, and, uh, and healthcare providers and governments. The problem is that uh, nowadays we account for uh, greenhouse gas emissions, so the, the gases that cause uh, climate change, at the point where they are emitted. So we are, for our emissions, that uh, for the services that we are enjoying here, of this microphone, of the camera, of the lighting here, of the air conditioning and so on, we are holding the power uh, companies, the power plants responsible. Yes, they also have a share in solving climate change. Nevertheless, totally distance, distancing the, the consumer from uh, these emissions, it's, it's a bad uh, way of solving things. Ultimately, it is uh, the services for which we are emitting these uh, emissions and it would be often cheaper and more effective and uh, socially also more, more attractive to try to solve the, even the power plant level emissions starting at the consumer level. And then after we reduce demand as much as possible, for example through passive buildings, then we deal with uh, the remaining emissions in terms of uh, greening those, uh, making them low carbon. Beyond just uh, the passive houses, it's uh, very important, or within the passive houses, I would say it would be very important to focus on durable production and the longevity of, uh, in general, of, of uh, the construction methods and, and the infrastructure that, uh, that they are building. Because it turns out that both the cost effectiveness and also emission effectiveness very strongly depends on, on the, the duration for which we are building these buildings and, and retrofitting. That's one. Another uh, thing is that it's very would be very important to uh, prioritize uh, low emission and uh, low energy building with construction materials uh, for the longer run. Since as we are moving towards uh, very low energy buildings, the energy embodied in the building materials, and not only in the materials, but the, the processes through which we build the buildings, so how we are, from where we are transporting these materials and uh, how we are going to the site and so on, these all uh, start to become or amount to considerably comparatively uh, important uh, amount of emissions as compared to the operative emissions. So um, we have to watch uh, and construction companies have to watch uh, these uh, as well. 
I would also look at definitely their, their internal practices. Definitely there is a lot of transportation, I'm sure, going on, how they solve their transportation needs, not only in terms of the vehicles and the fuel, but just optimizing. It's very important to try to avoid as many unnecessary trips uh, as possible. It is also in everybody's business interest, but still with today's new IT and the enormous amount of data allowed by, by the smart everything uh, and uh, the IT uh, revolution that we are living through, I'm sure that significantly more optimization is still possible also within the construction industry.